Hi, everybody. Let's talk about inventory estimation methods. If a company uses the perpetual inventory method, the cost of merchandise recorded, merchandise inventory recorded as an asset is theoretically correct at all times. If there was no such thing as theft or obsolescence or damage or errors, uh, the inventory under the perpetual method would always be correct on the books. And if that company's inventory was destroyed by fire or some other catastrophe, they could use the perpetual inventory valuation recorded on the books to submit a claim to the insurance company. And that's assuming, of course, that the company is making regular backups of their accounting information. But what about a company that uses the periodic method to account for their inventory? <clears throat> the only time the asset inventory is correctly reported on the books of a company that uses the periodic method is immediately after the company physically counts the inventory and makes an adjustment to correct the balance of inventory on the books. If that company's inventory is destroyed by catastrophe, the inventory is gone. It can't be counted. You can't count something that doesn't exist anymore. So a company that uses the periodic method to account for their inventory would be in a position where they would have to estimate the amount of inventory on hand just before the catastrophe. All of these methods do assume that the company is making backups of their usually computerized accounting information and that the accounting information was not destroyed along with the inventory. So in this video, we'll use the gross profit and retail inventory methods to estimate inventory for a company whose inventory was destroyed by fire. These two inventory estimation methods are discussed in your textbook at the back of Chapter 5 in Appendix 5B. Kendrick's store's inventory was destroyed by fire on September 5th, 20X1. The following data for 20X1 are available from the accounting records. Estimate the cost of inventory destroyed using the gross profit method. January 1st inventory at cost was 190000 That's on the books because at December 31st of the prior year, the inventory was counted and physically adjusted to the correct ending balance on the balance sheet. January 1st through September 5th purchases at cost, $350,000. January 1st through September 5th sales, net sales, were $685,000. And based on the historic gross profit, meth, um, percent, profit rate percentage, uh, historically, the company has had 44% gross profit percentage, and this year they expect it to be about the same had there been no loss by the fire. So we've got all the information we need to estimate the inventory using some really cool calculations. The first thing we have to talk about is what is the relationship of gross profit, 44%, to total sales or net sales, which could be considered the 100% number. Well, I think you remember that sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. And if we turn that into percentage, then 100% is the sales number minus what percent of cost of goods sold equals 44% of gross profit. 100% minus 44% equals 56%. So cost of goods sold is estimated to be 56% of sales. Do you remember we talked about how important it is 
to know that beginning inventory plus purchases equals goods available for sale less cost of goods sold equals ending inventory. Well, given that formula and the knowledge that cost of goods sold represents 56% of net sales, then we are in a position to estimate the ending inventory this way. Beginning inventory, $190,000 plus purchases of $350,000 equals goods available for sale of $540,000. Less estimated cost of goods sold, that's the $685,000 in net sales times 56%, is 383600 Subtract that from goods available for sale, and that represents estimated ending inventory. Isn't that a cool way to figure that out? So that is the gross profit method used to calculate the um, ending inventory that was destroyed by fire. The other method that we're given to calculate estimated ending inventory is the retail method. So let's estimate Kendrick's ending inventory using the retail method given the following, given the following information. Net sales for the period were $685,000. Goods available for sale would be the beginning inventory at cost of $190,000. Given their markup, they know that if they have the cost of $190,000 of inventory, that they would have marked it up to $340,000 retail selling price. And cost of goods purchased is $350,000. Given their standard markups, that would mark up to $625,000 of goods purchased at retail prices. Well, the first thing we have to do is find the goods available for sale. And as you know, beginning inventory plus purchases equals goods available for sale. We want to calculate that for the cost and for the retail dollar amounts. So goods available for sale at cost is $540,000. That's one ninety plus three fifty. dollars and goods available for sale at retail prices are is 965,000 that's 340,000 plus 625 now the next thing we need to do is to find a cost to retail percentage or ratio and that's easy that's merely this goods available for sale at cost divided by goods available for sale at retail and that's going to tell us the percentage of retail prices that the cost of that inventory is. So the cost to retail ratio is 56%. That's goods available for sale at cost, 540000 divided by goods available for sale at retail prices, 965000 That's 56%. Now we're in a good spot to calculate the ending inventory, estimated ending inventory at cost. And it works like this. We know that goods available for sale minus the cost of inventory sold equals ending inventory. Goods available for sale minus cost of goods sold equals ending inventory. If we do that at our retail prices, take goods available for sale and subtract the retail price of the items that were sold, 685000 That equals ending inventory at retail prices, $280,000. Now all we need to do is to multiply 280000 times the cost to retail percentage of 56%. And that gives us estimated ending inventory at cost, 156800 
In this Excel workbook, there are two worksheets. The first for Kendrick, and we've already gone through Kendrick's example. The next is for Sander. Sander's information is set up exactly like the information you saw for Kendrick, but there are different numbers. So your assignment is to calculate an estimated cost of inventory destroyed in the fire at Sanders store using the gross profit method and also using the retail method. You can follow the examples we set in Kendrick and you can also look at Appendix 5B in your textbook. So please pause your video and calculate the estimated ending inventory for Sander based on the gross profit method and based on the retail method. Then, after your calculations are done, start your video again and check your work. Did you estimate Sander Store's ending inventory to be 335000 under the gross profit method? If you did, you can give yourself a big pat on the back. If you did not, that's okay. Let's go through it. Make sure you understand your error so that you don't make those errors again. Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. Using percentages, 100% of sales minus what percentage equals 52% gross profit percentage. 100% minus 52% equals 48%. So cost of goods sold is estimated to be 48% of sales. Beginning inventory, 285000 plus purchases of 530000 equals goods available for sale of 815000 Less estimated cost of goods sold, that's the million dollars in sales times a 48% cost of goods sold percentage equals 480000 Goods available for sale minus cost of goods sold equals estimated ending inventory under the gross profit method. Now let's look at Sanders store estimated inventory using the retail method. Did you calculate 333,600 of inventory estimated under the retail method? If so, fantastic. If not, don't worry about it. This is You're here to learn this stuff, so let's take a look at it. Step 1. Find goods available for sale. Beginning inventory plus purchases under both the cost and retail prices. 285 plus 530 equals 815,000 cost of goods available for sale and 595,000 plus 100,000 equals 1,695,000 ,000 retail amount for goods available for sale. Next, get your cost to retail method or ratio that's 815,000 of cost divided by 1,965,000. Ah, I've got the wrong number here. One moment. My 48% calculation was correct. I just had a typo in this number. So 815,000 divided by 1,695,000 equals 48% cost to retail ratio. Then deduct net sales at retail retail sales from goods available for sale at retail prices and you have ending inventory at retail prices 695,000 multiply that number times 48% cost to retail ratio and you've calculated your ending inventory at cost estimated well, that's all for this video. See you next time.